So today we're talking about self-esteem. We're talking about the psychology of self-esteem. Why is self-esteem important? How does it directly impact your personal and professional growth? And is your self-esteem too high? Is it too low? How can we fix that? So, Kwame, what is self-esteem? What does self-esteem mean to you? Uh, self-esteem, I think, by the very definition, is uh, the confidence in one's worth and ability and self-respect as well. So, to have that confidence in what you can do or what you are capable of and honing that confidence and using it to do um, like whatever it is that you want to do or pursue, that is what basically self-esteem is. It's how you hold your head high. It's how you walk confidently. It's how you make tough decisions and still feel that whatever comes out of it, you'll be able to survive because you believe in your ability. So self-esteem can be the thin line between you achieving and not achieving. Self-esteem also means that you are able to feel and feel properly and still accept it and move. Without self-esteem, you're not making certain decisions and without self-esteem, you will see the full potential that you're capable of. So, I could go on and on and on and on and on. (laughs) I mean, one of the things that I absolutely admire about you is just your confidence in you. Like, just how you just have this confidence around you, right? Have you always been like that? Did you have to work on your self-esteem? Or, like, what influenced that? I don't think I've always been like that. Um, Unless you are crossing the line and getting into cocky and overly confident and arrogant. Most confident people, most confident people, if they are truthful, are often shy at first. But when you enter a room, you have to mask that shyness under um, a cloak of confidence until things die down and then you can express yourself properly. Self-confidence can be built when you discover yourself when you get to know yourself properly and give yourself time to actually be true to yourself and admit to yourself that this is what you're capable of this is what you can do this is how you want to do things and move with it i think that is how you build your self-confidence when i know myself enough there's you you can't define me you get it it's not what you're saying that defines me when i know what i can do and i can admit that oh maybe if you throw me into this area I can confidently say that, no, I want you to lie, so I can't do it. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know anything yeah. to do with, um, uh, let's just say, stock brokerage or whatever it is. I know that yeah. it's how companies trade and whatever it is. I have a general idea. But I'm not going to tell you that um, stocks are like this and this and Forex and this and these numbers mean this. Look, mass no crap and pain. <laughs> so, <laughs> so knowing yourself will inform a lot of your self-esteem um, and self-confidence, uh, knowing yourself. And often, people aren't true to themselves because we are caught comparing ourselves to other people for the most part. Um, we want to be like them. Now, the, the, the deciphering of wanting to be like somebody or wanting to be the person, there are two things. If you want to be like somebody, you can actually pick up things um, the person does and, you know, Um, adapted to what you can do so there are things you can pick and do but you don't want to be like the person exactly you don't know what the person is going through or the person is masking or whatever it is so self-confidence is knowing yourself and knowing yourself is being true to yourself and being true to yourself is knowing that you are not without flaws Um, you are not perfect it's it's okay to bump sometimes and you just have to learn to live with it. Learn. When you learn, that's when you get more confident. When you learn, the opportunity to learn is the thing. When you learn, that's when you get more confident about what you're capable of and what you're not capable of. And you move with it. Yeah. yeah. I think that one of the big things is, you know, identifying the parts of yourself that need to work. It doesn't necessarily mean that because this person is confident that they are without flaws or that yeah. they are perfect. Of course, they're not. Um, the reason why somebody is confident is because they're highlighting the parts of themselves they have found growth in, 
but particularly also working on the part of themselves that need a bit of development. And you're absolutely right. I find that the more you engage in self-development, the more confident you are. Yeah. Because it's just about having, you know, walking into a room and having a conversation. The reason why you'll be, you feel a little bit insecure is because you really can't talk about anything else but maybe one specific subject. And so yeah. when you walk into a room and there's a group of people, you don't yeah. even have a conversation starter of any kind. You don't even know where to start from. Yeah. And so I think that it's important that, number one, you work on yourself um, and the parts of yourself that you feel are flawed, but also being careful not to highlight those flaws because a lot of insecurity arises from focusing on the flaws that we have and just thinking, you know, blowing it out of proportion. Yeah. We are talking to ourselves all of the time. We are always yeah. having an internal dialogue. And what we need to remember is that whatever we say to ourselves throughout the day, right, impacts how we feel about ourselves. Yeah. You know, the body responds to whatever you say. The mind responds to whatever you say. So if yeah. you keep saying, I'm not good enough, Damn, I couldn't do that. This is so stupid. I'm so stupid. Like this is this is ridiculous. I can't do that's this. What, that's can't what you become. This. Exactly. That's what you become. Exactly. And also a lot of self um, low self esteem I see you is rooted in us looking for validation in other people, looking for external validation. Yeah. Waiting for other people to tell us how good we are before we accept how good we are. We feel that okay the number of followers I have, the number of subscribers I have, the number of likes I get on this post is proof of my self-worth. Which yeah. I think, you know, for especially for this generation right now, is such a flawed um, space to be. Yeah, flawed way of thinking, yeah. Absolutely. And for me particularly, I when I talk about self-esteem, it's one of the things that I can particularly relate to because it took a very long time for me to even master, you know, sort of the courage to be able to go into public schools with people. Yeah. And I think that, um, especially for those of us who are choosing right now, and those of us who are kids, I think it's really important that we are aware of how we speak to our kids, what we say or do not say. And I have to say right now that, listen, if you, if your self-esteem is rooted in any um, sort of um, clinical depression or anything like that, please seek professional help. But aside from that, you know, it's very important that you think and are mindful of how you speak to your kids, and are mindful of how it's not even just your own kids, but the kids. Everybody like else. And sometimes it's not just because it's not just because your parents were always like they they, they say your talk all the time, right? Yeah. But sometimes it's just because of what they did not say. You know, like I was yeah. saying the other day, um, I think on Twitter, I was saying I was talking about how alarmed I will be if my dad called me today and said, "Gloria, I love you." Like I would think that wait, if, if somebody died, <laughs> if somebody <laughs> happened, <today, laughs> yeah. like what? 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 What, what the hell? Because I'm in an African home, yeah. like you know, we don't, we don't about make that. our kids feel loved enough. Um, even in the language, even in the language, have you have you noticed that um, you, you you wouldn't hear middle as a regular way of speaking? Whenever we hear middle, it's um, tied to a romantic kind of love. Um, our language is not even accommodating this particular form of affection that you drop your kids off at school and then you tell them that oh, kabna ukwe middle cobra. Like, it sounds so weird, right? It doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. It, is, it sounds so weird. My doll saying, like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You get it? <laughs> so, this is, this is, this is deep rooted in the culture. This is deep rooted in generation after generation of how we see things and how we express love instead of um, vocalizing it. You get it? So, yeah. you can't even say my doll in your local language to your kid. It will sound very weird because when you hear my doll, a a open what's the picture so so it, it's quite it's quite um important what we say i mean now english or whatever it is makes it uh, very easy for you to express yourself in such a way and i think that we should be able to 
um, let it flow as much as possible. For our generation, I'm actually excited about the fact that there are these um, opportunities for us to have the conversations. Um, most of us, most of us um, are educated enough to at least understand um, certain things. Um, the world being a global village now also means that exposure to these things are becoming uh, much more easier to come across. So this is an opportunity for us to use these things to change our mindset before we impact it on other people. Yeah. Yeah. This is Book of Fanta. Book of Fanta comes to every Tuesday at 7 p.m. This is where I share with you some of my favorite books and some of my favorite people. And tonight we have Freme Kwame. Yes, yes. <laughs> Freme yes. Kwame is here with me and we are talking about self-esteem. Yeah. We are talking about the psychology of self-esteem. We are talking about how your self-esteem directly impacts your personal and professional um, growth and what you can do if you're struggling with low self-esteem or perhaps what you should do if your self-esteem is way too high. Kwame, what are some of the things that for um, everybody watching us now and for somebody who might be watching us who is really struggling with building their own self-esteem? What would you say are some of the things that you did that has made you um, a lot more confident than you were before? Okay. Um, so um, one thing I think um, Adam at the mentioned was uh, being a one-trick pony um, isn't something that builds self-esteem, um, which means that you have to be knowledgeable in a lot of things. So for me, I find that um, curiosity, you get it? Curiosity is one thing that is often limited in most African homes. Because when people are curious, they end up doing things that, quote unquote, bring shame to the family. So maybe I'm curious about um, knowing about uh, tattoos, or I'm curious about knowing about art, or I'm curious about knowing about this, or I'm curious about mixing these things to do these things. So long as a baby female fear and I say, I mean, it will bring some shame to someone, they block that thing from you so that you don't even build on it. That is the thing that other people have advantage over because they are allowed to function and they are, allowed, they, they are controlled or they are managed, not stopped. Managed that, oh, if you do it this way, it might not happen this way, so try this way. But don't stop it. You want to see where you can go with it. So for me, me personally, my um, character or my self, I've always been a rebel. I've always been a rebel. That's what I've been. I don't know where it comes from. So I don't know if, I mean, you can also build it, but I often overthink a lot of things. This is where my rebellion comes from or my stubbornness comes from. I often overthink a lot of things. So before I make um, a decision, I have probably thought of um, possible uh, alternatives or consequences from A to Z or even gone. So before I say yes to something or before I do it, I know that if you put me in a tight corner, I can justify almost everything I did. I'll argue it out until you say that to go for you, are beating me because me a stubborn. You get it. So that for me generally made me more rebellious because I knew what I was talking about and I would find out about it. That's the thing, the curiosity part. I will find out about it. Why, if I do this, it becomes this? Or why, if I do that, it gets that? Or this, 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 this. So when I can confidently argue out why I do certain things, I feel like it makes me feel confident enough to try the next thing. So over time, I learned to know where my strengths are and where my weaknesses are. And knowing that, like you said, knowing that also makes you know what, what fights to pick and what fight not to pick. Just going back to setting goals for yourself, I feel that when you struggle with self-esteem, one of the things that I will readily recommend that you do is set goals for yourself. Yeah. Because whenever you're able to, and self-esteem, I feel is directly connected to self-discipline as well, mm -hmm. right? So when you say that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to achieve this, in the next year, I want, I want this, I want to be here. In the next week, I want to be here. In the next month, I want to be able to drop 10 kids or whatever. And you're able to master that self-discipline that helps you achieve that state. Mm -hmm. It just creates, it hits your, it hits your um, brain with 
I don't know, what is it called? Is it it's, dopamine? It's dopamine. It, it's, it's dopamine. Thank you. It's so dopamine. it hits it hits your brain with this few good um yeah, it's this dopamine. good feeling, right? Yeah. And it just makes you feel so accomplished. It just makes you feel so good. And yeah. you want to do it over and over again. And the more goals you're able to achieve, the better you feel about yourself. Yeah. And for a lot of us, self-esteem um, also is it's a little bit to do with self-image, right? Mm-hmm. Like how you view yourself. Part parts of ourselves that we don't particularly like yeah. make us feel uh, some type of way. So maybe it's your physique that you want to change. Maybe it's whatever. But I don't think that it is also to do with how good you look that makes you confident, or no, how, it's how good you feel. Material, exactly, or yeah. whatever you have, but realistic thing. It's about how good you feel, and it's about yeah. what you are telling yourself every day. Yeah. Right. So there's this there's this saying um, there's this saying that there's this saying that um, uh, you don't make the clothes like the clothes don't make you. Sorry, the clothes don't make you. You make it. So you and I can walk into the shop, same size, same whatever it is. We we're gonna wear the clothes, but when we walk into the party, how I move in those clothes, how I feel in those clothes, the aura of what I've given the clothes. So it's not the other way around. I give the clothes aura. I make this look good, not the other way around. So if all things being equal, we go into a shop and we're given the same amount of money, same amount of clothes, we look almost the same and we are walking. It's how I feel about what I'm wearing. That self-image also comes from environment. Let's talk about environment. Environment does a lot for us. So if you are put in an environment where um, you're not told, you're not reminded because it sticks in our mind. You're not reminded of how good you are or how good you can be or why you should that also sticks with you so sometimes it's not it's not the person's fault that they're that way yeah. Yeah. however however it's your fault if you remain that way i would say it yeah. because change is something that is open to everybody change is open to everybody you get it and so that's why you shouldn't be comparing yourself to other people exactly right? that's the exactly. exact reason why you shouldn't um, and I think that a lot of, for a lot of us, again, when it comes to self-esteem, we feel a low sense of self because we are comparing ourselves to the other person without particularly knowing the full story of yeah. that other person. So yeah. we are looking at that other person thinking, oh, wow, their grass is so much greener. Oh, wow, look at her. She's got this and that going for her. Oh, wow, she's got a great marriage. Oh, she looks so good. Like, she's yeah. so much thinner than me. I wish I had her clothes and things like that. And the more you sit and compare yourself to other people, the more miserable you will be. God knows what that other person you're comparing yourself to is going through, right? So we don't think about it like that. We don't think about it like that. And what I do personally, I mean, you've mentioned number one, satisfying your curiosity. um, Which I think is a great way of discovering yourself and discovering your strengths and building on your self-confidence. And we've also mentioned um, number two. What was the second thing that we mentioned? I can't remember now. It's only being remembered three seconds. The curiosity curiosity bit. Um, I also mentioned the fact that, well, you you just mentioned that you shouldn't be comparing yourself to others because you don't know what Um, your story is. So carve your own journey or carve your own Yeah. There you are laying, Charlie. Yes, carve your own (laughs) path and stick to it. Now, the general ball game is the fact that knowledge or whatever it is, is open if you seek it, right? Yeah. So once the path is there and you want to seek knowledge, knowledge is what adds on to your confidence. The more you know, the more you are capable of, you know, expressing what's in your mind. You get it. Yeah. So if the, 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 that part is not um, inaccessible to you, because the person's money or the person's body is genetic, like yeah. not the not the money, the body is genetic. But what maybe, affects maybe the not. Maybe, 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 not. maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the person bought it. But what is accessible to you is the fact that um, you have the opportunity, the opportunity to change your body to suit how you want it to. Yeah. It's your body. It's open to you. There's no limit to it. 
you have the opportunity to change your body to what you want it to be. Now, remember that your body cannot be exactly the, the same way as the other person. We are not cloning ourselves here. So, self-confidence is also knowing and admitting that your flaws are also your strengths in a way. Yeah. Yeah. They are unique to you. Nobody yeah. else can be like you. And knowing that your flaws are unique to you and you know what you're capable of is what you will build your self-confidence because from there, when you make mistakes, it's not your mistake that you are measuring against the other person's mistakes. It's your mistakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's 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 a lot to do with, um, I mean, outlook on life, uh, mental assessment of ourselves. Yeah. Like, and I, I think that one of the things that I'll add to that, Kwame, is going back to internal dialogue and going back to what we keep telling ourselves. Yeah. Like, you have to, and you will be, guys, you will be surprised how effective this is, right? But you want to try telling yourself or, you know, repeating positive affirmations, like, on the day, and yeah. see, after a week or after a month, how much better you feel. So yeah. all of the things, right? Um, and for me, what I do personally is, I keep a grand teacher, number one, and number two, I always make sure that I highlight all of the parts of myself that I have grown, or all of the parts of myself that, um, the little victories, right? I always highlight my little victories. Little victories. Like, we disregard, we disregard all of the things that we've been able to achieve over time and see it as well, yeah, normal. But it's not. It's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Like, just little things. Like, telling yourself, oh, wow, look at me from a year ago. Why I was a year ago. <laughs> if, like, I see my right pictures, if I see my pictures from five years ago, I'm like, hey. <laughs> right? <laughs> Like the other day, I was cleaning my closet and I saw a picture of me from like 10 years ago. I was like, and oh my god. Let's, like, let's bend those pictures. Let's bend those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did it. You did it because it's a great opportunity for you to recall how far you have come. Like, I look at that picture and I was like, so I think I'm fat right now. But please, look at me 10 years ago. Like, I look like twice my size, right? And I'm like, okay, so I'm actually not doing that bad, right? <laughs> Give yourself some credit. Give yourself some grace. And remind yourself that, you know, growth takes time. Good yeah. things take time. You know, Beyonce wasn't built in a day. Rome wasn't built in a day. Like, yeah. you have to consistently acknowledge your growth and consistently work on the areas of yourself that need you to work on. Right, but if you keep telling yourself, "Oh, look at me! Oh, look at my black handles! Yeah, like I look so fat! Yeah. Oh, like look at my nose! Oh, look at my ears!" Like, you know, and for those, I think that for those parts, of, yeah, for those parts, like I was saying, genetic, you can't change. Like, it. over the day, over the day, right? You, just, just go to love it. Just yeah, go to love true. yourself. Be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am the only one who owns it. And if you can change it, fine. Then you know, take the steps that you need to help you be able to accomplish that. But you have to consistently celebrate yourself. You have to consistently remind yourself of how far you have come so that you see that as motivation for you to keep winning. Because at this time, you will dwell on all of the negative things and forget how much value that you actually bring to the table, right? Because you're comparing so much. Guys, if you're just joining the conversation, this is Books and Panda, Books and Panda comes to you every Tuesday at 7 p.m. If you've got any questions for us, we'll be taking your questions in a minute. So just use the sticker, the question sticker, um, just next to your comments and just type in your question and we will be more than happy to help you find answers to those questions. Unfortunately, I may not be able to read through all of the comments right from the top, but if you use the question sticker, I'll be able to find your question immediately. So let me see, I think that I've got a question here. Noah T, Noah T underscore W is asking, how do you overcome the anxiety in speaking in front of the people? Kwame, what are some of the steps that you Ooh. have taken? I mean, like, I feel like when I sit in front of a camera and start to talk to you, like, I get so nervous. I feel like five million people are watching me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, that's a very, that's, that's, a <laughs> it's very crazy. that's a very difficult thing, right? Um, but I would say that 
having the anxiety to overcome this would be to prepare and prepare a lot. Now, the beginning, remember that even the, the most uh, professional professionals still get nervous at this point in time before they step onto any stage. So you are not alone. Don't feel like the professional is so good. Also remember that the professional has been doing it for about eight to 10 years. So yeah. they've managed to build certain tricks that work for them, like looking across the heads of the people and not necessarily looking directly into one person's Oh, look at here, like right here. Yes. In look between the, the eyebrows. Yes, look in between the eyebrows or look across the room and just remember how you break. Your, your, your breaker in terms of the conversation or whatever it comes to that, your breaker is what settles you. So your breaker is what needs to be strong. When you break strongly, sometimes it eases up everything and then you realize that everything else is flowing. So if you are thrown, if you're not naturally char charismatic and you are thrown into um, like a situation where you have to talk in front of people, that don't beat yourself up about the fact that you are um, nervous or whatever it is. It's normal to be nervous. However, however, if you've been given prior notice for a very long time, see, I would say that even rehearsing to the point where it feels like you are acting, just go and act it. Don't look at anybody's face. Act it. Read the room. Now, the difficulty here is I don't know how to um, calm your anxiety, um, but breathing in and calming down, breathing in slowly and calming down. You breathe in, you hold your breath, you release, and you talk that might help i i really don't know that i really can't tell you exactly a science to stop anxiety because even the biggest of biggest uh mcs tend to have bad days Listen, tend to have i like, can i can totally sign on what you just said because like i i have been to a lot of i have been invited to a lot of speaking and ordinary if 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 you've met me or if you if you know me at all, you will know that I am not one for other things at all. Yeah. Like right? yeah. I thrive on one on one um, much more than standing in front of a crowd and speaking. And what has helped me be able to stand in front of a crowd and speak confidence is just mentally stepping into somebody else's shoes. Like I just imagine that I just take a piece of myself that is conscious, yes. it's just an acting, right? So there are some people that you may think about, or there are some um, situations that you may think about that automatically make you confident. Imagine yourself in that scenario. Imagine yourself talking to that person. Look into the crowd. If you find somebody who is constantly smiling at you, look at that person. That's your person. That person. That's and your person. To that person. Imagine that yes, we, you and person. I are alone in this room, right? Yes. And you look at them and talk to them. And yes. it's like, imagine that everybody else there isn't there, right? Yes. That's, that's my thing. That's my thing. So number one, stand in front of a crowd. I mean, even Beyonce, I was listening to an interview uh, where they were asking Beyonce, like, how she's like this whole vibrant person on stage. And she was saying that she stepped into character. Like she has a completely different role, which she calls Sasha Fierce. Right? So when she steps on stage, she's not Beyonce anymore. She's Sasha Fierce. So she imagines herself as, you know, as, like an alter ego herself. And sits in that. And that's what helps her. So find your thing. Find the thing that makes you confident. Find the thing that makes you overcome that anxiety. And it's okay to tell the audience that, hey guys, Listen, I'm actually a little nervous. Friend. I'm a little nervous. So forgive me if, you know, I stumble a little bit. That, that, in that, itself, yes. <laughs> that in itself right? just takes you off that pressure. When you say it and you finish, and maybe even your next line, Uba, that's the same kind. <laughs> then they start laughing and they realize that, oh, okay, cool. Let's let's calm down. Let's calm down yep. and let's talk. So hello, guys, again. Uh, welcome to the program. My name is this, this, this. As I already told you, I'm really nervous. It's my first time. And yeah. please take it easy on me, okay? Okay, so this other question is coming from Opendo underscore Malaika. Opendo Malaika is asking, why is being so confident being rude? How can you deal with that? 
Okay. I, I, you know, seriously, before you even answer that question, Kwame, I think that this is a big thing in just an African sentence, a Ghanaian sentence. Yeah. Like, yeah. people just see somebody who looks to be sure about themselves, looks like they're sure about themselves, are confident in the object. Oh, he yeah. didn't know that. 22 movies. <laughs> like, who do you think you are? Right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you're not even being rude, they just don't know you like that. Yeah.